Hey everybody, welcome back. It's been a while since I've done one of these. I've been uploading a lot of shorts recently and not enough pants. So let's do a bit of longs and um, yeah. What better way to get back into the whole long form video thing uh, other than uh, doing another, oh, I guess a continuation of where I left off, which is, I think I did like a, a vintage haul to start off the year in January. And so I'm going to do uh, a continuation of that because there's been some more hauling of vintage goods. So let's do that. Um, I don't know if it's a thing, but um, I'm going to do my coffee cup as well. Uh, a la uh, Jonathan. Mine's purple with a heart made of flowers because I'm just that kind of guy. Mm, brought to you by cheap ass shit. All right. And scent of the night is Antaeus. Nice and warm and cozy and beastly. Um, and that's what I'm going to kick off with. I'm going to kick off with, uh, I think, how many fragrances did I get? I've got quite a few. Let's go through them and uh, we'll tell you a little bit about each one of these. Um, we'll kick off with the letter A. And the letter A is for Chanel. Chanel's Antaeus. <laughs> now, I showed you this one last time, which is the, uh, the vintage Antaeus here. And uh, there is another to join it. And so there's two un Antei. Antei. If that's what you would call them, that's what I'm going to call them now. The slight differences. I don't know if there's any experts out there that are watching that know Antei's very well. I know these are both vintages. Um, maybe one's from the 80s, one's from the 90s. Uh, it's not entirely sure because I don't have the boxes with me to confirm. Chanel's are very hard to date. And the Antei's the Antei are even more difficult. So the only difference that I can tell between the two is that the one here to my left has got the of the 80% and this one does not have it. But they both smell very much identical and they both are extremely strong, very well projecting just crisp after all these years they've kept their form they've kept their shape real oak moss and castorium in here and i have to say i've come around to Antaeus. it's taken me a while it is quite masculine without the pissiness of kuros i can totally handle this and uh, right up my alley if whenever i want to feel more hairy chested than i already am Antaeus, beautiful. If you haven't already like checked out, I think they reformulated this pretty well. And I think for modern formulations, it, it still does well. Maybe for older guys like me, we want a little bit more something rough around the edges. Um, and that's why we go for the vintage. Next up, I also picked up um, a couple of more vintages of course this is a vintage haul but um i picked up this guy here which is uh, yves saint laurent's uh poor homme and uh, another another one here now there are slight differences uh, to these this is a i don't know if you can read that but it is a parfums corp it's a parfum corp one and this one because i've got the box i can tell that this one is a Charles of the Ritz one. So this is an earlier version, and this is a later version, most likely, most likely something like mm, late eighties or something like that, right? I think that's when Parfums Corp had the Yves Saint Laurent. They both smell great. Again, same thing as Antaeus. They they smell great. And they smell very classy. Typical masculine of the day. Um, and I think probably you could probably pull it off as a, as a young guy, but I wouldn't recommend it in this sea of, I don't know, sweet offerings and things like that. But it's good to have these in the wear action. The wear action. It's not a collection. It's a wear action because you got to wear the fragrances. You don't just collect them to look at them. Next up is another... Oldie, it is this one right here. This is uh, Dolce Gabbana's Feminine. They also have a masculine, and uh, the masculine's very 
citrus based and the feminine from the cap here you know you you kind of get like this floral sort of seaside almost uh almost aquatic sort of scent but it is actually a floral and it it actually wears quite well and it's one of these things that this like this was released in 1999 and back when this was released this would have been traditionally a feminine sort of leaning scent and you had your masculine scents which would have smelled traditionally masculine with all of its masculine elements 25 years later i'd probably say that this is unisex right now this is unisex and so it can be worn and i kind of like it i think it was went really nice i wore it the other day it was quite warm and it actually wore on skin very well um yeah i don't think this ever got reformulated this is a euro italia um, because you can tell that it's an old vintage of um, Dolce Gabbana because it is a Euro Italia. We'll probably tell you somewhere up here on the sticker at the bottom here. Okay, so there you go. It's a classic. This is a blast from the past as well. The next one is um, one that I've been trying to get for a long time. And uh, I'll show you right now what it is because it is... Zirius Rouge by Givenchy. This is the original bottle, the original Art Deco bottle. Now, if you know, this is a flanker of the original, which is just called Zirius. And that had a very similar bottle to this, except it was dark blue. This one is red because it's called Zirius Rouge. I much prefer the smell of this to that. Some people think that this is way too strong and cloying and synthetic. That's kind of what I like about it. It's got that cactus pimento sort of thing going on at the top. And it's a very uh, strange scent. I think Anique Minardo. I'm pretty sure it was Anique Minardo. Yes, yes, it was Anique Minardo. I just checked. She was the perfumer on this. One of my favorites. I think probably my favorite perfumer. She always does something kooky, especially with her designer offerings. Um, now, uh, I, I had this in the 90s wore that uh, and then I actually ended up buying another bottle in the mid 2000s finished that and then in 2019 I bought another bottle because I, I needed to have the fragrance just for memory's sake now my 2005 bottle had matured quite nicely and it smelled a little bit better than this did when I first opened it up. However, give it a few years and this has come along nicely as well. And I thought, wow, okay, it has matured, not macerated. The word you're looking for is matured. It had matured in the bottle and it smelled great. Until I smelled this and I tried it on and I wore it. And then I remembered that, ah, yeah, I remember now. It's supposed to smell like 10 times richer than it currently does. And so now that I've got this, I'm not sure what to do with that old bottle. I might just keep it around just for memory's sake because it might remind me of certain things. But really, if I want to wear it, I don't think I have any other choice than to wear the original. And I love this Art Deco, Art Deco bottle. All right. So cool. All right. This is one where I think the reformulations have just have not been as good. And this vintage is something special, especially for me and my memories. What else did I get? What else did I? What else did I get? Oh, yeah, I got this. OK, so last time no, I didn't show you this last time, but I've had this. This is my original uh, bottle of, uh, I don't know, what's it, what is this called? Can you guess? I'm pretty sure you can. It's it's Fahrenheit by Christian Dior, or also known as Enhe by Oliolio, because all the letters have come off and I've lost the cap, as you do. This is an old bottle. This is a vintage, it's a first formulation from 1995 and don't believe anyone else who tells you anything different because from 88 to I think 2001 was 
the one formulation. They didn't change any formulation until that point. Um, you can probably tell if you have the box, the box has changed and therefore that indicates the formula had changed as well. And one of the things that Christian Dior usually does is they put the formula number on the box. Um, I don't know if they did it for this one, but anyway, this one that I had was a 1995 bottle. Managed to pick up uh, another one, this one with a box, the original box, another 50 ml. Uh, this one has a cap. And I did wear, wear this the other night, and it is also as beastly as my older one. This is a 1994 bottle. And this one has a cap and it's almost full. So I think I've got enough to last me a lifetime for Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit, beautiful scent. Even applicable in modern times for modern people. Not out of place anywhere, I'd say. Alrighty, and the very last ones. Ones because I think I bought, I bought more than one because... Okay, here's how it works. Um... I I had my original I had my original bottle of jazz and we're talking about Yves Saint Laurent's jazz. I had my original bottle. There's not much left in here. There's maybe about 25 ml left in my old 100 ml bottle. This is a I don't know if you can read that, but that is a Parfums Corp bottle. It's the old piano keys bottle. Uh, soon after I got that, I ended up also picking up the old live jazz, which I'm not a huge fan of, but I think I'm coming around to actually remember people who used to wear this. I used to remember seeing this around in, in quite a lot of places. Um, even the even the old jazz, I remember seeing that around in the early 90s. I remember the advertisements on TV. I never wore it back then, though. It wasn't it wasn't my thing, right? And when I actually picked it up, um, I don't know, recently, not, not that recently, maybe a decade more, more than a decade ago, I was older and it, it really, I liked it a lot more. Let's just say that. Let's just say that my sensibilities had grown into the scent and instead of, instead of the, the scent having been changed because this is a, a vintage and it's represented in the way that it was supposed to be represented. Anyway. Um, after I got that, I ended up getting the Jazz Prestige, right? Which is actually really, really nice. I'm, I really, really adore this one. Um, I've gone through a bit of it already. It was a lot more fuller than this and a little bit more citrus forward and somehow a little bit animalic as well. I mean, I, it's got its occasions, but more for an... Uh, an occasion rather than uh, uh, a sort of all-rounder like what jazz can possibly be. Jazz is a very lovely aromatic uh, fragrance. Um, so I ended up picking up two more, right? One 100 mil, which is quite full, almost very full. And another, another one, which is a 50 ml. Another piano keys one. So there's three of those now. And this is a Parfums Corp. And this is a Parfums Corp because I think they're the only ones that actually manufactured it uh, during the time that it was being made with these piano keys bottles. Um, Parfums Corp. I think Parfums Corp was the only ones that made these. So. so yeah, that's it. That's pretty much it. That's my little mini sort of vintage haul. I mean, it's not mini. It's, it's a haul. It's still a haul. But uh, I think... It's a whole of very important landmark fragrances. Things like Yves Saint Laurent Pour Homme, things like Antaeus, Jazz, Fahrenheit. All things that everyone who's getting into perfume should at least test out. At least once. Um, and if you can, get yourself a vintage version. And if you can't find those because they're getting quite rare and expensive, then maybe try for a decant someone will be able to offer you a decant somewhere around the world and you'll be able to test these out even if you don't like them it's it's still good to know like the 
the roots of what we consider, you know, kind of, like, kind of like some people consider this the golden age of masculine perfumery. So, yeah, it's good. Good to get yourself educated in that, especially if you're getting into this kind of thing. And hopefully it won't be like another two months before I release another video. And as always, thanks for watching.